A very good uh, good evening to all of you. We will soon begin with the session. Dear participants, I would like to welcome you in this AICT Yatal FDP day three program. And today we would like to make some announcements about the activities. I invite the session planners to make group of the teams separately and they can organize their own meetings through Google Meet and can discuss the activity of book chapter. So we will meet again in some time uh, for those activities in physical or in uh, offline mode. But as the duration is very short, we have less time to do all these activities. So we uh, interact with each other through online mode. Till then, we will keep interacting through the sessions, through the group to encourage you to participate in all these activities. Our resource person has joined. So I would invite Professor Pankaj Madan sir to start with the session to bless us in the beginning of this session and we will then keep on uh, keep forwarding the session. Thank you sir. Sir. Namaskar, Madam Sir. Namaskar, Professor Sanjay Mishra ji. Welcome. Thank you. Om Bhur Bhavaswaha Tatsavitru Varediyam Bhargo Devasyadi Mahi Dhiyo Yunam Prachodaya. Aaj ka satra bahut hi interesting hone wala hai, kyunki bahut hi renowned professor, Professor Mishra ji humare saath hai. Ab mein session planner se request karunga ki vay सेशन को स्टार्ट करें और जो अभी डॉक्टर सुरेश ने बात बताई है विल बी शेयरिंग द नंबर्स ऑफ द टीचर्स हु आर इनटू वन ग्रुप लाइक श्रद्धानंद ग्रुप सो द मेंबर्स हु आर इन द श्रद्धानंद ग्रुप दे विल बी नोइंग द नंबर्स ऑफ ऑल द इंडिविजुअल्स इन द ग्रुप सो दैट दे कैन स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग देयर चैप्टर्स फॉर द बुक चैप्टर्स फॉर द बुक व्हिच विल बी compiled in the last of the FDP. Session, over to the session planner. Thank you, sir, uh, for bringing me on board. This Atal FDP on leadership organized by FET Gurukula is one of the one of its kind in which the participants have voluntarily showed interest and are acting as a key pillar in the organization of this program. I believe that uh, this will let participants experience the essence of true leadership. Now, I would like to invite session chairperson, Dr. Lalit Raj Singh. Uh, sir serves as an assistant professor at Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya. Sir has over 12 years of rich experience and is acting as a chairperson for this session. Over to you, sir. Sabiko uh, Mira Pranam. And thank you, uh, Prigati. First of all, I am very much thankful to the program coordinator, Honorable Professor Pankaj Madan, sir, uh, Dean Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Gurkul Kangri Vishwavidyalaya, and Professor Suyas Bhadwas, sir, for giving me the opportunity. So, leveraging your time, I would like to invite the our uh, Vedic mantra, as you know, energize us, they give us energy, they purify our mind, and they refine our consciousness. So for that purpose, first of all, I would like to invite Miss Pallavi Bhardwaj ma'am for that. Uh, she, she is having three years of experience and affiliated with Gurukul Kangde Vishwavidyalaya. So over to you, uh, Ms. Uh, Pallavi, ma'am, for the further proceedings. Thank you, sir, for bringing me on the soft board. Trini Rajana Vidathe Puruni Pari Vishwani Bhushata Sadasi. This shloka is from Rigveda 
38.6. Its meaning and relevance with leadership is that it states that both the employer and the employees work together for the happiness of the organization and the science developed employer of the organization works for knowledge, freedom, religion, good education and wealth of all employees of the organization. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for simplifying the meaning of the Vedic mantra. So all of us might be having different and unique understanding of these Vedic mantras. And there are certain characteristics that are needed for good leadership. So we start by discussing that how these traits are helpful for development of leadership skills. So I would like to hear from the participants uh, what they understand about the meaning of the mantra. Any of the participants may contribute. As of my understanding, as I uh, uh, understand from the Vedic mantra that uh, knowledge, freedom, religion, quality, education, and wealth, all are interrelated with each other. If I talk about the quality education, means national education policy is playing important role in that. So through national education policy, quality education is achieved. Knowledge is integral part of that, means the Vidya and Siksha, both covered under it. And the freedom is liberated only after we have certain standards of the knowledge. So, uh, and the religion is also the part of the freedom. Once we get uh, freedom means here the physical, mental and uh, spiritual understanding generates the religion. So, this is uh, of my understanding, even the participant may contribute and may add on uh, with my person. Kindly, can you elaborate which madam, in these traits, which of uh, these traits is best for leadership, uh, academic leadership? As yeah, this, actually, for leadership? Uh, uh, the meaning that uh, Ms. Pallavi uh, gave us about these mantras uh, that uh, she mentioned about the four characters uh, of and uh, by the meaning of these Vedic mantras, the quality education, knowledge, freedom, religion, she related uh, through these mantras. So how these Vedic mantras are helpful in development of the leaderships? So I think uh, 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 we uh, must understand from our uh, resource person about uh, all these things. So further we move to the next session. Uh, it was uh, uh, because of uh, paucity of time, we need to move to the next session. For that purpose, I would like to our session coordinator, uh, Dr. Prince Prasant sir, for the further proceedings. Uh, Dr. Prince sir is having uh, 13 years of experience and he is affiliated with Gurukul Kangri Vishwavidyalaya. So over to you, sir, for the further proceedings. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I take the opportunity to introduce our speaker uh, for the session. So, uh, Professor Sanjay Mishra is serving as a head and dean in the Department of Business Administration, Faculty of Management, MJP Rohil Kund University, Bareilly. With approximately 26 years of teaching experience, his research interest includes business analytics, qualitative techniques, business, in international business, corporate social responsibilities, and strategic ma management. He, he has published more than 73 papers in national and international publications with international publishers. Very recently, he has published one book entitled strategic for, Strategies for Survival and Success of Organizations in Pandemic Period in 2022. Sir has awarded eight PhDs and guided more than 300 projects. Before you begin, sir, I would like to mention that we would take questions and at the end of the session. Thank you very much, sir. And we can't wait to hear from you. Over to you, sir. Professor Sanjay Misra, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prashanji. 
welcome sir uh, good evening uh, professor madan uh, dr lalit raj singh ji and dear participants uh, it's really an honor to be among uh, academicians and people i was listening to the speakers they were telling me that uh, most of the participants uh, whose names are appearing on the window they have experience ranging from say 3 years to 13 years or 10 years whatever it is so i feel that uh, uh, since you are in academics from such a long time uh, you must be having a real experience about how the things function how the academic institutions function and how the academician or you can say teacher or you can say guru functions and operates and uh, how environment forces the institutes and the teachers and uh, what we do and you must have also realized about the importance of leadership that is how with the change of institute head or how with the change of uh, a teacher things change so this you must have seen in the organization where you are working and uh, you must have experienced as a, a student in your life and as a teacher in your life so since it's such an important issue so when i got an opportunity uh, from the side of professor madan i just could not resist in saying yes and uh, i do apologize to the organizers that uh, they have been demanding my questions or the ppts and certain other things which i was not able to give yesterday night only when i got some message from uh, dr bharadwaj that he is waiting for certain questions which needs discussion then i sent it somewhere around 11 in the evening actually there is a certain work which is in progress in the university and uh, so i am a bit engaged there but since uh, this uh, fdp is so important and the topic is so important and i thought i must spare time and i must learn from you uh, whatever the people have said that i will be delivering a lecture or i will be telling you something maybe that could be a formality that is how we uh, when we conduct some uh, academic event we proceed but the fact is when i have come here i have come here with the mind and intent to discuss things with you and uh, one thing which underlies my mindset is that i am going to definitely learn certain things from you people because as a teacher as uh, all, all of us are teachers so we know that learning is a process which never stops so now without uh, talking much about in general i would like to come on the topic of discussion today which is academic leadership and uh, the uh, personality development so i will be sharing uh, certain slides those slides doesn't carry much but just to keep myself on track because it so happens with me that uh, many a times Uh, that discussion goes uh, sometimes haywire and uh, we are not able to complete in time that's why i am switching on to the slides i think the slide is visible slide is visible sir okay yes sir yes sir now so the one thing which comes when i look at this academic leadership and personality development is that why today we are concerned about academic leadership or why it is in so much discussion that 
we should discuss that how institutes are moving or how teachers are moving. What is the reason? Can anyone, just anyone share with me? I won't say because it's online, uh, so offline uh, is good, but online, if you are sharing, if you are discussing with me, then it keeps the session lively. So anybody, just to speak your mind. Good evening. Yeah, yeah. Good evening. So my name is Shreya Arora. I'm from uh, GKB University itself. Yes. Uh, sir, I am just presenting my views, although I'm not sure if I'm right or wrong. Hmm. Yes, sir, basically academics, jo hota hai, wo basically uh, it is a pillar for a, for each and every field, I think. So if leadership can come through or can build through uh, this field, uh, this platform, then I can uh, say that uh, it will be more beneficial or uh, effective in other fields also. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, very correct, uh, Shreya Arora ji. Thank you so much, sir. Anybody else, any, uh, anybody having any some different view? They, sir, but, myself. Yes, yes. Yes, myself, Dr. Masmikar, from Quantum University, Mumbai. Sir, I think if the academician is a good leader, so they can create so many leaders and uh, they will contribute for the development, for the development. Yeah, good, good, good. Let's say whenever as you people are in higher uh, education institutes, universities or colleges, uh, you must have realized that uh, when we discuss something and in reality, nothing, uh, uh, most of the things you cannot put in black and white terms. That uh, this is the reason for uh, discussing uh, academic leadership today. As uh, Shreya told that uh, uh, there are certain reasons and she elaborated them. Then Mosmi came with some other reasons and uh, I feel both are correct. So whenever we are discussing, we have to be very clear that uh, we should not have absolute opinions uh, because that say puts us in a very uh, say at a platform which is very slippery. So, for example, if you, when I'm delivering a lecture or you are called as a resource person or you are leading an organization and somebody asks you to speak, then there are certain presumptions. Presumption is that uh, you will be putting a question and I will be answering. So, in other words, it means that I know everything. And uh, I know the pros and cons of everything. And uh, I do the analysis and, and I make a statement and that is correct. So if I am doing that, it simply means I am faking. Right? Whether I am leading an organization, we talk about the leaders who are leading organizations or you talk about leaders who are leading countries, or you talk about a person who is delivering a lecture as a resource, right? Because it never happens in reality that you know everything. You have solution of everything. But then the problem is if you accept it, and if you accept it as a leader, then you feel that, uh, it leads to certain questions about your leadership. It leads to certain question marks on you as a resource person or as a teacher in class or as a person who is leading an institute. This is what we have in mind. And uh, since we are starting, so my submission to all of you is because whatever I am telling you, I have read it somewhere, I have heard it somewhere, or I have experienced in life. But the fact is, I am speaking because after all these things, I believe that this is correct. 
so my submission here is that uh, always have an open mind always have an open mind as a teacher or as a leader you can have a particular viewpoint you can have a particular particular opinion based on your knowledge and based on your experience and uh, maybe that is correct uh, some of the times or most of the times but it doesn't mean that uh, there cannot be anybody or there cannot be students uh, who have a better viewpoint or who have experienced certain things uh, more than you it could uh, very much be possible so my submission is that uh, always approach a class always approach uh, a discussion or a talk with a open mind that is my first submission since because i feel being a teacher it's my duty to share with you since you are listening to me that uh, what i feel is correct and uh, i know most of you must be following this you must be knowing this but again uh, some of you are very young and some of you find yourself in certain situations when it becomes difficult to accept that i don't know so for those people it's my submission now as i asked you why we are discussing these things there are many reasons but when i think about these are certain uh, issues which comes in my mind we hear about sustainable development that is uh, we hear about uh, resources uh, natural resources are depleting as such a fast pace that maybe uh, a time will come when uh, future generations or generations to come will not be having them so we talk about an approach sustainable development use the resources in such a fashion that all you uh, the term is we say it's an optimum use so that available for us and maybe available for coming generation so it's a very uh, hot issue these days and uh, from last many years sustainable development is being talked at uh, different fora and platforms uh, starting from your uh, schools colleges universities or uh, uh, say at political rallies at uh, uh, meetings of the government officials or the discussion at the cabinet or some at international platform the world leaders are talking about the business leaders are talking about so this is a problem which is real and which is glaring at us we just cannot avoid it we just cannot shun it and uh, we have to find a solution uh, so similarly we hear about uh, environmental challenges they talk about melting of glaciers some reports say that maybe a time will come that uh, the glaciers have melted or uh, they tell us that the glaciers at some places they have shrinked by this centimeter or this amount in the last so many years then they relate with the floods which are occurring the rising level of waters you talk about rains you talk about cloud bursts uh, or floods or forest fires and uh, when you hear you hear it that uh, uh, it is not even uh, not uh, simply occurring in india it is occurring or not simply occurring in uh, uh, lesser developed countries or less developed areas this is happening in uh, uh, the most developed areas the most developed countries and these people who are uh, fighting with these maybe if you talk about developed countries they are fighting uh, for with fires in australia in america for days for months and it is where it, it becomes difficult just to uh, get rid of these fires or you talk about rains or cloud bursts or floods uh, you can start from china japan or any other country you can name it or if you talk about india 
every now and then you hear about a cloud bus taking place in some uh, somewhere at Uttarakhand or it could be a torrential rainfall at Mumbai or something like that. Or recently we uh, we were reading certain newspapers. They were telling about the flooding in uh, this uh, IT city or the garden city of Bangalore and uh, then how things were uh, thrown haywire and uh, these officials started working from their home because they cannot move out. And then there was a statement by somebody, I don't know, some expert, I was reading in a newspaper, he said that, okay, Bangalore is prepared, they can go for 20 centimeter or something or like that, or mm of uh, rainfall. But when it happens, or it happens in one hour, then even 15 becomes very difficult. And this leads to these floods. Uh, so this uh, this is uh, taking place, and then you talk about economic disparities. Uh, you have uh, uh, you have very rich people, or you can say you have super rich people, and then you have very poor people. This is uh, extreme, which you get in newspapers, uh, but that is not a big issue. That could be a headline, that could be a sort of a discussion for some uh, show. But the real problem is that you have masses living in poverty and then there is a class which is having maybe most of the uh, luxuries uh, which anyone can think of. And when you look at the period of this uh, disparity that is uh, uh, from how long it is there, then you find it maybe it is not a phenomena of two years or five years. It is existing from uh, say decades and uh, now it has reached a proportion that it is leading to social unrest, it is leading to terrorism, it is leading to revolt, etc, uh, etc. Et we hear all this uh, on channels, on social media, uh, we read it in newspapers, we discuss these things in uh, seminars, uh, webinars, workshops, uh, economic frauds, money siphoned, uh, right? Uh, the people uh, who are being praised by uh, the media, by the leaders, uh, how they have been successful, how they fought in their life to achieve whatever name and fame they have achieved and uh, say how hard they worked. Uh, we uh, hear all this, we read all this and uh, sometimes we grow up hearing these stories but one fine morning we read in a newspaper that the person uh, uh, who has been eulogized by, say, uh, so many people across uh, cities and maybe across countries. All of a sudden, we hear about uh, his black deeds, that uh, how he manipulated things uh, uh, to achieve the fortune which uh, he is having. Or uh, we hear about the crime. It is just a list of certain things which came in my mind when I was thinking about this uh, topic of discussion, then these certain issues came in my mind. And when we talk about all these issues, uh, then uh, sometimes we become quite gloomy. We start thinking that uh, what has happened? Why this problem? Uh, why these problems are there? Why they are staring at us? And what is the way out? Uh, why, why it is happening sometimes if you talk with the people who are not that experienced or who are young or maybe sometimes uh, middle-aged people the, uh, they become uh, feel uh, they become quite gloomy uh, uh, it leads to desperation that is uh, how we will move out or how we will come out from all this uh, whether we will have a future whether we will have a bright future so all these things, they, uh, they, they disturb us. And when this uh, disturbance takes place, when this churning takes place, when that, uh, say, 
it leads to the pauses, it leads to silence, it leads to thinking and then uh, certain things emerge that what is the way out. And when we think of the way out, we think that maybe these problems could not have been there. These problems could not have been there or these could be minimized or these can get minimized or these can be erased if we have literate people or we say we have educated people or then we use responsible people or we have developed people or people with high character. So when the problems are facing us, when we try to solve the problems, when we try to fix these problems, then we feel that the remedy is literate people. That is, if literacy increases, then this, uh, many of these problems will get solved. Uh, people will be more civilized. Uh, people will have more income. People will have a better quality of life. Then again, as this development process uh, moves ahead, uh, we move from literacy to educated people. Not simply literate, but they are educated. Educated in the sense they understand why things are happening. How, how things are happening. How they can be better what they should do, what they should not do. Then the next step in this process is responsible people. People who are responsible, who realize they are educated and who realize their responsibility. That is, if there is a, a issue about civil unrest, then what I should do? What is my duty? How could I ensure that uh, this problem gets uh, minimized? Then we, some people talk about that as developed people say, maybe I, I don't much differentiate, but they say responsible or developed, they say developed means dev people of developed nations, maybe the Europe or maybe the America or whatever you have in mind. That is, the people know about climate problems, the people know about economic disparity, and you have all the lectures, papers, research papers from their side. And uh, so we talk about developed people. But still the problem persists because these problems are not only confined to, as I told in the start, to this uh, developing nations or undeveloped countries or the countries of Africa or Asia. Now these have uh, engulfed uh, the whole, the, all the continents and maybe most of the countries. So then we feel that uh, this literacy, education, responsible, developed is okay, but we need people with high character. Because this character is very important. If you think of a nation, if you think of a society or if you think of a world in which uh, people can think independently, uh, the needs of people are getting fulfilled, they have a safe environment, they have an environment of mutual respect, then you require people with high character. These are certain things uh, which came in my mind and which I have tried to put it here. 
so i will just take a pause and i would like to uh, solicit a, a response from your side that if you want to add something in this or if you want to say anybody then please share with me hello yeah can you hear me anybody uh, you are audible you? professor yes. 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 you are audible hello prachi you were saying something sir i was saying that you are completely audible completely hello yeah yes sir you are very much audible I was not able to get the last word which you said. Maybe there's some issue with net. I don't know. Sanjay ji, आपके आवाज आ रही है बिल्कुल सही. आ रही आ रही है ना मेरी आवाज. हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल ठीक है एकदम. ठीक है. Okay. Now, now when we think of this, then we look at how these problems could be solved. then we start thinking about our schools we start thinking about colleges universities institute basically this educational system we feel that uh, all these ills we can get rid of if we have a educational system or system of education which is a uh, good one or best one then these problems will get automatically solved and uh, obviously when we think of this will get automatically solved we have at the back of our mind that uh, there is something wrong with the system there is something wrong with the system i'm not talking about something wrong in india or something wrong in uh, uttarakhand or up i'm not saying when i say something wrong maybe it could be wrong in west maybe it could be wrong in india maybe it could be wrong in a particular institute but since a problem is there so we feel that uh, some work is required and uh, one of um, uh, the learned person before me was talking about how nep is taking care of good things uh that is a different issue i'm not going to discuss that but what i am saying is uh we talk about nep 2020 or we talk about uh, quality of education or we talk about quality of research work or we talk about nec uh, we talk about nirf we talk about qs ranking and uh, so many things basically the idea is we feel that if we do this if we go for this ranking or if we go for this grade or if we go for this or that then the system will be improving this educational system will be improving basically if you go for any sort of grading say you talk about nag then the, there are different parts or components of it it talks about uh, curriculum it talks about research it talks about student progression it talks about uh, social uh, responsibility it talks about best practices uh, and and so on and so forth uh, basically if you are going for that particular uh, grade or ranking then it require that you are you will be working on different fronts and the idea is that if you go for the ranking and you want a good ranking or a good rate a good grade then you will work on different components and when you will work on different components uh, then improvement will take place in the institute and meaning thereby it will get reflected in the uh, educational system or education that is basically the spirit right so these schools colleges and universities become very important and that brings us to the topic of today's discussion which is uh, leadership and personality development now when there is something wrong in this 
So who is uh, supposed to fix them? Who is supposed to put all these things right? Now, as I, yesterday when uh, Dr. Bharadwaj, I think, uh, he asked for certain questions, one of the things which I wanted to know from the participants, so it is the third day, I think, that what is the difference between a leader and a uh, manager? This was one question. So anybody? Sir, uh, yes, most me. Sir, leader always follow the democratic approach. But for mm -hmm. manager, for the managers in the situations, it may be something the autocratic approach or something. Mm -hmm. Or another difference is that he manager. Sometimes manager may be self oriented, but leader is always be a group oriented approach. They always follow the group oriented approach. Uh, the first, uh, they think that the first benefit for the group for their group, but for the manager, uh, they think the benefit for the organization. Okay. Anybody else uh, who want to share something? Uh, sir, they uh, yes. uniquely uh, create their own new path. They don't uh, believe in repeated path. They create their independent, unique path, and that is problem. Uh, uh, they, they take reasonable risk also. Okay, okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, now when I talk about when we look for uh, from where we will get the system, as I told that we have this thing in mind that uh, the system is flawed, right? It's not working the way it should work. I'm talking about the educational system or it is being operated uh, with wrong paradigms in uh, mind or the mindset. It is not managed properly. It is not managed properly. That's why this rot has set it. And we want to get rid of this rot. And this brings us to the important question of academic leadership. Now, since there are problems and uh, all of us accept and all of us are seeing these problems are there and these problems could be solved if we have uh, good citizens, if we have responsible citizens, if we have uh, educated, developed citizens with values and characters, these problems will not exist. So we have in mind that uh, this is not happening and the people who are responsible or the institutes who are responsible, there is something wrong in them. So if a system is flawed, if it is not producing what it should produce or if it is not doing what it should do, then it requires uh, thinking, it requires discussion about what we are doing and what we are not doing. So that brings us to the basic question of flawed paradigms. Uh, paradigms, uh, all of us know, and uh, I don't think it requires any elaboration. But again, since uh, it's a webinar and uh, say, uh, it's online basically, 
this FDP and uh, so we are not face to face. So I will like just to speak one line about this uh, paradigm, then we will move on to the next thing. So that uh, if there is any doubt or if we are on uh, say, different uh, levels as far as understanding of paradigm is concerned, that is sorted out and uh, further discussion becomes uh, more uh, say communicative and uh, we are able to understand each other in a better manner. So when you talk about paradigm as all of you know and it has been very rightly or uh, what I find about uh, one of the persons who has explained it in a very nice way is Stephen Covey uh, in his uh, uh, famous book that seven habits of highly effective people. So paradigm is basically a sort of mental map. Right, uh, keeping which you look at the things. So, if the mental map which you are having is not right, then it's a problem. Say, for example, uh, uh, if I land at uh, Haradwar, basically by train at the station. Uh, I asked Dr. Madan that uh, this is for the first time I'm traveling to Haradwar. So I will be discussing with the participants in a face-to-face -face manner, maybe on 24th or 23rd. But I don't know much about uh, Haradwar and where this Gurukul Kangri University is. And second thing is I, uh, I am a very, very orthodox type of person. I don't use mobile, I don't use Google or I, and I want to travel on my foot. I wouldn't be say using a taxi or a rickshaw, something like that. Then he gets surprised. He say, okay, you uh, it will take some time, maybe half an hour. What I can do is uh, I will send a person who will be at the station and uh, you come along with him. I said, no, no, I don't want to say, uh, 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 give trouble to anybody else. What you do is you just, uh, uh, send a map of the particular uh, route from railway station to that Gurukul Kangri Vishwavidyalaya. Then he sends me that uh, uh, map from uh, railway station to Gurukul Kangri Vishwavidyalaya. He gives it uh, this map to somebody and he says, okay, you post it on this particular address, it will reach Bareilly. So Dr. Mishra will get this map and he will be traveling. So that uh, post reaches my university and uh, PN comes with to me that this is the letter which uh, we have received from Pankaj Madan. So I look at the map, there is nothing mentioned. It is written railway station and it is written university. So I think, okay, it's good. And I keep it in my diary. By chance, I have a lecture to deliver at uh, Dera Dunals. So Dehradun people has also sent me a map from that railway station to that particular institute. And I keep both the maps in my folder. And when I start for this Haradwar journey by train, these maps get mixed up. So when I reach at the Haradwar station, instead of uh, the map which was provided by Pankaj Madanji for rail, from railway station to Gurukul Kangri, I have a map of Dehradun station and from Dehradun station to a particular institute, maybe institute uh, situated somewhere on the Masuri road. So I look at the map and I start walking. Now what will happen? Whether I will be able to reach Gurukul Kangri Vishwadhyaya? Simply looking at the map? It is not possible because the route is different. Maybe I will be moving, uh, Towards Rishikesh, it says you take the turn left or right because it is as uh, keeping in mind that Dehradun Institute. So I will not be able to reach that Gurukul Kangri Vishwavidyalaya because the map which I am using, the map which I am consulting, that is wrong. And I am totally guided by the map. Maybe if I uh, work on my, say, Okay, uh, no issue. Uh, I'm not reaching Gurukul Kangri Vishwadhyaya and R has passed. 
I start moving fast, what will happen? The only thing is I will reach a wrong destination in less time. In no way I am going to reach Gurukul Kangli Vishwadhyaya. I reach some other institute and then I ask there, they say, okay, this is not Gurukul Kangri Vishwadhyale, this is, uh, uh, say, Shanti Kunj, uh, Sri Ram Sharma's uh, uh, ashram, Shanti Kunj. And okay, if I have a very positive attitude, I can say, okay, fine, no issue, not able to reach Gurukul Kangri Vishwadhyale, but at least I have reached some place. But the fact of the matter is, that because of a wrong map, I have reached a wrong place. So paradigms are simply like these maps, mental maps, which guide us. Whenever we have to take decision, whenever we have to do the, anything, we look at the things from the mental maps which we are having. Say, for example, if you are wearing green glasses, you put on green glasses, then everything will appear green to you. If you put red glasses, everything will appear red to you. Things are not red. Things are not green. It is the glasses, it is the lens through which you are looking. So first of all, have the correct lens, correct glass. Then only you will be able to see reality. So when we talk about plot paradigm, this is what I am basically pointing at. Why I say it is a flawed paradigm? Say something has wrong gone with our educational system. When I say something has gone wrong, it basically means, uh, actually if you just uh, introspect, I don't know. Uh, I, I just suggest you just introspect you people are in teaching, just ask yourself why you are in teaching. What exactly is the purpose of teaching? Just think over it. Then uh, you will get different answers. Different things will crop up. Maybe it gives me uh, money. Maybe I am able to support my family. Okay, support family. Then um, I am in teaching because I can teach physics, uh, a thermodynamics or something very well. I am master of thermodynamics. Maybe I am a best person regarding financial management or uh, I can teach about quality of work life or I can teach about aerodynamics, or I can teach about uh, something related with uh, computers, artificial intelligence, deep learning, could be anything. I'm master of that. Or I am teaching because when I teach, uh, students pass out and uh, uh, they become expert and they get job. They get job. So basically I'm teaching so that people get jobs, they get employed, they have a safe and secure future. Or they make more money after doing, say, if you look at the uh, average uh, uh, package of our students, uh, minimum it could be, say, around 6 lakhs and maximum it goes up to 35 lakhs. Though we are not the IMs or the IITs, so it's a good package. So now you look at these statements, whatever I said, it gives me money, it gives security to my family, I am uh, expert of a particular topic, my students uh, get job, they, get, uh, they make good money, something like that. Is it the reason why teaching should take place? Is it the only reason? Just uh, reflect upon it. Just reflect upon it. This is my just uh, submission. I'm not saying that if you are having all these approaches, it is wrong. 
दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट दीज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट द बेसिक रीजन of education is character building now what has happened is that somewhere in this race uh of this basically i will call it uh uh producing uh, workers for factories or organizations whatever it is that is people who can make money we have started training them but so it is something like a rat race uh, we have uh, involved ourselves in this rat race and what happens is the irony is that even uh, somebody wins the race then also he or she remains a rat that is the irony of rat race so when i talk about this paradigms basically i have in my mind that education has a objective which is very lofty which is very big and which is for when you talk about uh, uh, this vishwas kutum that only happens when you have a very strong character when you think of the world as the whole world as your own and on that foundation you start putting these bricks of professional expertise skills training job right these are just natural outcomes but what has happened is that we have removed if you look at the last uh, many years we have removed uh, the foundation just to have a very tall building we thought this foundation is useless this uh, character building is a uh, worthless exercise so why not use the bricks which are in foundation for raising the or height of building or the tower so now you are having a tower which is without foundation and when you are having a tower which is without foundation the result is this tower is going to collapse it is going to crumble and, and this is what you are seeing in these floods in this depletion of environmental resources fleecing of environmental resources a uh, frauds uh unsustainable development and a mad race about success about chasing money about chasing titles and you have totally forgotten that you are you are on a building which has no foundation that's why i say that there is a basic problem and this problem needs to be fixed right now coming to wrongly managed we feel that uh, the institutes which we are having or uh, the classes which are uh, being run by teachers they are not being managed properly so we come on to this next thing of leader and manager as i started when you are in the trouble when they, when you are lost in the forest you are lost in the forest it is a very thick jungle maybe a amazon type of jungle you have been dropped in it and you don't know where the way out is now that brings us to this question of leader and manager you are lost in the jungle you don't know which way to move manager what manager does is basically he says you move ahead he provides you the art uh, that you have something to cut the bushes to remove the trees and you start cutting the bushes you start cutting the trees and you start making the way and you start moving right that expertise is provided by the manager that efficiency is provided 
how to remove these grasses, how to remove these uh, bushes, how to remove these trees so that we are able to make a path and we can move on that path. But my dear, the problem is when you are removing the bushes, when you are removing the trees, it is no guarantee that uh, the path on which uh, the path which you have created or the path on which you are moving is the correct one. Maybe it could be something like that. You are moving in the direction of that owner, what you call it, anaconda or some big uh, whale or some big uh, wild creature who is waiting, right, and waiting for the prey. And who is leader? Leader is somebody like who climbs a tree in the jungle, reaches the top of the tree and looks all around and then able to decide that which direction we have to move so that we can move out from this jungle safely. That is manager. He climbs the tree. He reaches the top of the tree. He looks all around and then he decides in which direction we have to move. So when you are talking about academic leadership, this is what is required today. Academic leaders are teachers who teach in the class, who take classes, what you call it, professor, assistant professor, or guru, whatever is the term. And academic leaders are the people who are leading these institutes. So today I will be talking about only these two. In my discussion, we will be focusing on teacher and we will be focusing on uh, this uh, institute head basically. And how they lead and what they should have for leading correctly or for able to tell us the correct direction. I think I'm not making people too much or the lecture has not become too boring. No, sir, please continue. Okay. When it becomes too monotonous, you just let me know. Sometimes things become quite abstract. So if you find at any uh, place or point, you just stop me and we can have a discussion uh, on something else. Okay. So as I said, it will be teacher and institute head. So when I talk about teacher, what is required? A vision. If you are a teacher, you must know. You must have a vision. Basically, as a teacher, you must have a vision. Why you are a teacher? What is ultimately which is going to be achieved? Are you a teacher for publishing paper in some newspaper or journal? Are you a teacher for taking a class of one hour or two hours or three hours a day and seven days a week? Or are you a teacher because at the end of a year you will be getting some money and your students will be able to clear the examination and moving to the next grade or getting a job? As a teacher, you should have a vision. And vision as that uh, if you have uh, people uh, from management side, then uh, there is an article written by, long back there is an article written by, I think, Porter, what is a strategy? And he talks about strategy, something as, uh, something, a goal, you should, you should have something very big. He said, hairy, audacious. So when you talk about vision, it should be very big. The bigger picture, I am a teacher. Once I am able to perform my duties 
it will lead to something of a creation of a society which will have less of disparity which will have more of peace which will have more of respect and this will happen only because of the people who are being guided by me that is that something very big should be your vision and when you work on it now it should be a missionary zeal sometimes we have a vision but we don't believe we don't believe in our vision we write it on a wall we copy it from some facebook or uh, some quotation book we put it on our dp we put it in our room at the back of our chair now that is i don't feel that is a vision vision statement because you don't believe in it when you have a vision vision means something which is there in your veins in your blood you believe in it it just flows out from your body your eyes your words your movement everything so nobody if somebody ask you uh, you are not required to look at it or read it you can uh, tell what your vision is at any point of time at any place and when you have that vision then comes that missionary zeal to achieve it as i said when you have a vision obviously it implies that you are able to see the bigger picture when i talk about bigger picture as a academic leader because when you are leading as a, i think mosmi or shreya somebody said at the start uh academic leader it means because we we are the people or the academicians are the people who create leaders it's 100% correct it's 100% correct all the students who are passing out or moving the portals they will be leading tomorrow they will be leading uh, maybe some political party they will be leading some business organization they will be leading teams they will be leading families so we are there we create them we are creators of leaders but when you talk about creators being creators of leader you should be able to see the bigger picture your approach should not be a piecemeal type of approach uh why i'm uh, uh, maybe uh, why i am saying this or why i have written is because as i said at the start of the lecture i have uh, seen these things happen in my life and when i am writing this it is not to point out uh, uh, certain flaws in teaching community or teachers or young scholars or maybe old scholar the only thing is i just want to point out the pitfalls uh say so what happens is na uh peace meal approach say for example if you go for an interview i don't know many people of uh, you must have gone for different interviews maybe your phd interview maybe going to a new job maybe going for promotion so many times when we take interview and uh, we ask uh, uh say a teacher say okay uh, what is your area then the person tells okay this is my area maybe if i talk about management they tell say marketing is or this uh, tell okay finance or hr whatever it is then you ask them okay uh, uh, okay finance is fine then tell us uh, which particular uh, say industry of uh, uh, which particular say organization or which particular function of finance or, or which particular level of finance or which particular method of finance or which particular topic of finance you are comfortable or you know say you have prepared for the interview or you are master of it, something like that then the most of the time i say most of the time 
most of the time is uh, finance uh, finance is fine I, I know finance i have done phd or i am doing phd finance is uh, I, you can ask anything then you put a question you say okay you tell us about uh, inventory management say for example you talk to tell us about the balance sheet something like that any method you ask okay this method you know then sometimes the reply is this method i am knowing i'm not knowing i am this method I, the second method i am knowing then you ask okay why you are doing the second method why you are not doing the first method uh, sir with the paper which i am teaching right now na sir in the syllabus only this method is mentioned or these two methods are mentioned but we can use any for solving the problem so this method i am knowing this is what i mean by piecemeal approach when as a teacher you have this approach that this particular topic or this shortcut method i should study and when a student ask a question in the class you say this is not from your syllabus sometimes our reply is i don't know uh, i am just sharing what happens is when a student asks what are the different ways in which we deal as an academic leader when a student raises a question one uh, answer is one approach is okay this is the question or the issue you have raised we are there to solve it and we provide the answer this could be one approach second could be sometimes it is okay this is what you are asking uh, this is not from syllabus right so leave it it's already very exhausted syllabus and uh, you focus on uh, what is written in the syllabus this we can discuss once the syllabus is over you come to my chamber we will discuss it or we say uh, okay this is uh, a topic uh, it's not, it's not in the syllabus and second thing is now this i am teaching to the whole class i am not uh, for you so if i start talking about this method also it will be wastage of time for others so we can discuss it later on or sometimes we directly shut up that person now this is what is happening if you are following this then it's uh, really not correct okay when i talk about bigger picture what i mean is bigger picture is that you are able to put all the things right all the things means why a person or a student is studying a particular or he is or she has taken admission in a particular program you know so uh, engineer okay you will be an expert of computers you will be an expert of the electrical engineering or management hr expert or whatever it is so once you are expert either you will become an entrepreneur or you will become basically a manager or a technocrat whatever it is so this is why you have taken the program and this is the outcome which will be there but then you are able to put this program in the bigger context of the real life once the person is able to complete the program he will be operating in a real world he will not be dealing with books he will not be dealing with only machines he will be operating in a real environment in which there are people there are living beings and living things who have emotions who have intelligence and what is happening in the class or being discussed maybe the things doesn't happen as per the book things unfold in a totally different manner so you want you have to prepare the student for this real life and when you have to prepare the student for the real life then you also inculcate in the student that okay you have taken admission in this program and the best thing is that your parents want that you should be able to become independent 
and in our society when we talk about independence uh, i don't know about how it happens high and how many families but if you talk about myself if i talk about myself basically long back uh i got the certificate that i have become independent or i can take uh, a decision on my own when i got the job and when i got my first salary then my parents thought now he has grown up he can take a decision he has become independent so this is what happens what uh, this is the psychology so once you get a job then the parents feel or the society feel or the relatives feel that now you have become independent and as you know independence is always a, a better proposition than dependence but what you have to tell the student is that the best proposition is not independence it is interdependence it is interdependence and the real world operates in this interdependent or with this interdependent approach or relationships as you step out from the portals of this educational institute you have to realize that maybe you are expert of something maybe you can give so many things to the world but at the same time you will be taking 100 times more from the world and your success and the quality of your life depends to a great extent upon what you give to the society because ultimately that comes back and if you have a approach that creates a lot of disharmony in the society maybe by crushing people maybe by insulting people maybe by overstepping then ultimately there will be problem in the long run this has to be realized this has to be accepted and as an academic leader you have to inculcate this in the student and when you talk about inculcating in students the best thing is you can inculcate or you can teach by example so if you are practicing something else as a teacher and you are teaching something else to the student then uh, my dear understand it in very clear cut term the students are much much smarter than us they know the technology more than us they devote lot of time studying or finding out what a person does as a teacher what he does in the class what he talks with the students what he talks with the colleagues how he operates in the real world right they do an analysis with a microscope they are so sharp that they know what will be the next body movement of a teacher when he or she enters the class what will be the next word he or she will be uttering and when the teacher becomes uncomfortable if something is spot or something is asked which he or she is not knowing then how he or she is going to react you can shut them down but it doesn't mean that they have not been able to understand immediately they note in their mind that whatever is transpiring today in the class it is all rubbish it is not to be followed it is not to be implemented that's why what happens is na they start looking more at this online material they start looking more at this uh, uh, videos etc 
and now we are talking about whether a teacher is required or not some of the people uh, say covid has given us a very good thing and good thing is if you talk about this bureaucracy they say that okay one teacher can teach sitting at one place to lakhs of students so maybe in future we won't be requiring or we should not go for uh, appointing teachers at such a large scale that is a totally wrong approach because they are not able to understand what is the role of teacher and what teacher can do so my uh, point here is that as a teacher you should be able to look at the bigger picture uh say if you look at jigsaw puzzle now when a student comes he has different pieces there are many pieces in a jigsaw puzzle but if you know that uh, these are parts of a puzzle and if you put them properly you will get a very good picture maybe of a animal maybe of car or something else so once you realize this you start putting the pieces together and you try to reach on the correct picture or uh, the shape of flower or car whatever it is but once you realize this if you don't realize this if if you don't know this then what happens is you are having only a part and you are playing with the part you don't know why it is colored blue or some portion of it is having some spots brown spots but once you realize that it is something this brown spot is uh, regarding the skin of a tiger and all these pieces are having this blue and uh, yellow or spots or some eyes are there it means if i put all this i get a picture of tiger you start working on it so as a teacher your role is to convey to the student that you are having small pieces right now you could become an expert of computers you could become an expert of medicine you could become an expert of finance you could become an expert of a particular field but your expertise will produce the best result when the pieces of all of you right are placed at the correct places and you get a bigger picture and that bigger picture is a society a society developed on principles a society developed on characters so your expertise will produce the best result for you and the society when you fit perfectly in this world that rhythm is to be achieved that synchronization with the nature is to be achieved that should be the goal and as an academic leader you should be able to teach this and teach this with example with your example there shouldn't be any discord between what you are speaking and what you are or how you are behaving uh uh i don't know there is a uh, there is a story in hindi uh i read it maybe 30 or 40 years back and maybe some of you must have heard it and the story is about uh, a daku daku you understand na khadak singh so i read that a story maybe 30 years of i don't remember the story was that uh, there was a dakat by the name of khadak singh khadak singh ek dakat tha aur wahan pe jahan pe rehta tha wahan koi baba the i'm not remembering the name of baba 
दिरवसम बाबा इट्स अ वेरी फेमस स्टोरी उन बाबा के पास एक घोड़ा था और वो घोड़ा ऐसा था बाबा के पास कि कहते हैं वो हवा से बात करता था जब वो बाबा उस पर घोड़े पे चढ़ के निकलते थे बहुत ऊंचा बहुत सुंदर बहुत तेज दौड़ने वाला और सबको ये लगता था ये घोड़ा तो ऐसा दुनिया में कोई है ही नहीं अद्वितीय टाइप था अब वहां पे एक बहुत बड़ा डकैत था जिसका नाम खड़क सिंह था तो खड़क सिंह जो था वो उसके दिमाग में आता था मेरे पास भी घोड़े हैं मैं इतना बड़ा डकैत हूं बट जो बाबा के पास घोड़ा है ये घोड़ा मेरे पास ऐसा कोई नहीं अगर ये घोड़ा मेरे पास आ जाए तो क्या बात और ये घोड़ा तो मेरे पास ही होना चाहिए लेकिन कभी उसकी इतनी हिम्मत नहीं हो पाई या पढ़ पाई कि वो भाई जाग के बस्ती में या जहां जहां पे बाबा रहते थे कि रात में चोरी कर लाए या ले आए एक दिन क्या हुआ कि बाबा कहीं जा रहे थे घोड़े से बहुत पहले की बात है तो मैं स्टोरी थोड़ी भूल सा गया हूं बट जो इसका क्रक्स है उस पर आप लोग ध्यान दीजिएगा तो बाबा जा रहे थे घोड़े पे तो उन्होंने देखा रास्ते में सुनसान रास्ता तो उन्होंने देखा एक आदमी बड़ा बीमार सा पड़ा हुआ है बड़ा सिकुड़ा सा और काफ सा रहा है करा सा रहा है कुछ कंबल सा फटा सा पड़ा है तो बाबा थे बाबा को दया आ गई और बाबा घोड़े से उतरे और या उस आदमी हाँ उस आदमी ने शायद उस बाबा को हाथ हिलाया हेल्प के लिए तो बाबा घोड़े से उतरे और उस आदमी को देखा तो बड़ा कांप रहा था बड़ा बीमार सा लग रहा था उस आदमी ने बाबा से मदद मांगी कि वो बाबा उसको घोड़े पे बैठा के पास तक कहीं ले चले वो चलने में असमर्थ है कहीं वैद्य तक ले चले लेकिन वास्तविकता ये थी कि वो जो आदमी था वो डाकू खड़क सिंह था जो उस वक्त एक्टिंग कर रहा था एक बीमार आदमी की तो बाबा ने उसको उठाया किसी ने पकड़ा और उसको अपने घोड़े पे बैठाया जब उसको घोड़े पे बैठा दिया डकैत को और जब बाबा चढ़ने लगे तो वो खड़क सिंह ने कंबल फेंका और बाबा की लात मारी बाबा पीछे साइड में हो गया और वो घोड़ा लेके आगे बढ़ गया तब बाबा को रियलाइज हुआ कि ये तो डाकू खड़क सिंह था और ये मेरा घोड़ा ले गया तो जब वो घोड़ा आगे जाने लेके जाने लगा तो बाबा ने कहा एक मेरी बात सुनते जाओ खड़क सिंह बड़ा प्रसन्न था कि आज उसे ये घोड़ा मिल गया तो वो रुका और बाबा की बात सुनने लगा और उसने उसे बड़ा गर्व था खड़क सिंह को कि आज ये घोड़ा मेरा हो गया तो उसी वो मुद्रा में उस पर घोड़े पे आसीन था और बड़ा तना हुआ बैठा था तो बाबा ने उससे कहा कि तुम जा तो रहे हो लेकिन ये जो आज किस्सा हुआ कि तुम बीमार पड़े थे मैंने तुमको उठाया और तुमने ऐसे घोड़ा ले लिया ये किसी से जाके इसका जिक्र मत करना क्योंकि अगर तुम जिक्र करोगे तो आगे लोग विश्वास करना छोड़ देंगे लोगों की मदद करना छोड़ देंगे कोई बीमार होगा तो समझेंगे हो सकता है डाकू खड़क सिंह हो या कोई और हो बहरूपिया हो तो मैंने आपको ये इसलिए बताया कि एज अ टीचर एज एन एकेडमिक लीडर इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट इज व्हाट वी प्रीच वी शुड प्रैक्टिस If we are not practicing what we are teaching, then student loses faith in us. And when he loses faith, it is not a question of a particular student losing a, but losing faith in a particular teacher. It so happens that slowly it affects the whole system, and people lose faith in teachers and in teaching community. and this is what precisely has happened today that faith has been lost and uh, one thing of realizing that faith has been lost is 
many of my friends will agree that previously again you go back 20 years or 30 years or 40 years if a teacher is to be appointed nothing was required uh, you talk about a university you talk about a college the department head is there and somebody has done PG or something like this. He says, okay, I want to teach. Then the, whosoever is there in the department, he looks at the person, you can teach or not. Then they give something, okay, you teach. Then that person is going and teaching. That process continues, maybe for six months, maybe for a year. Then the head decides, okay, this person is to be appointed. And uh, finally, that person gets appointed. Or a sort of interview takes place in which head is sitting, the principal is sitting, or maybe if university it is, uh, the vice chancellor is sitting, head is sitting, uh, two, three people are sitting, and uh, they call you, an interview takes place, and you give the answers, and you are appointed. Similar thing for promotion. But now what happens is, because, again, that because I am adding, you have to, uh, you want a promotion, you want appointment, and then they say you should be PhD, uh, you should be NET, uh, you should have papers published. Uh, now they talk about API. Then they say you should have papers in UGC care. Then they said, uh, they say you should have paper in Scopus. Then they say you should have uh, certain uh, lectures, online lectures, MOOC, SWAM. Uh, they say you should have provided consultancy. They say you should have gone for extension activities and so on and so forth. Everything they want to quantify. Because this element of flexibility that they want to remove. They feel that if this element of flexibility is there, that qualitative decision making, this is uh, leading to corruption. But I have uh, um, maybe this approach because of majority people not doing this is happening. Now they talk about uh, at many places, I don't know, earlier it used to be in private places, now it is happening in government places also. That is, they talk about attendance of teacher, they talk about uh, signing in register as a teacher, then they talk about uh, biometric attendance, they talk about biometric attendance in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, I don't know at what place it is going to stop. You uh, Now they are trying to uh, mechanize everything. Now this is, uh, this is uh, something which has happened because of that Baba and uh, Khadak Singh uh, story. Because it has been misused misused and misused to a great extent and that uh, led to a development of psychology that uh, they are not behaving in the correct manner the who should uh, lead or who should uh, uh, be responsible for producing or making or uh, leaders of tomorrow so they have uh, starting developing a framework and now Earlier it was a frame that uh, it was a boundary wall or something like uh, two feet. Now you have a boundary wall of 10 feet. You have uh, something covering your head also. Then you they have put the chain in the legs also and the hand also, everything. And then they feel that uh, uh, we will be, or as teachers, you will be able to change the world. So that is uh, sometimes becomes questionable. But my point here is that as a teacher, you should be able to see the bigger picture. You should be able to tell the student that you are a small piece, right? And you have to fit in the bigger picture. If you are able to fit it properly, then the result will be the best. Uh, then uh, qualities of academic, uh, leader. So here I am talking about, uh, still I am continuing with my teacher. So for this you require, if you want to be a leader, you require knowledge. Without knowledge, nothing is going to take place. 
and knowledge requires uh, the, a real sort of sadhana. Uh, we want to be great teachers, right? Everybody wants that um, uh, when I deliver a lecture, I should have all the knowledge, I should correlate the things, or uh, when I speak, people listen, people stop and listen. Me. When I write, people say, this is what uh, was awaited and this is now it has happened. When I write a paper, it is accepted. When I teach something, people hear. When I teach students, they accept it. When I tell something to the society, they follow. This happens with the knowledge. And for for you to be a real leader, academic leader. Knowledge is something like a sign Without this knowledge, it is just impossible to be a teacher, a good teacher. If you don't have knowledge, then you have all sorts of problems. You have all sorts of problems. You discourage uh, discussion in the class. You discourage uh, analysis, you discourage healthy criticism. You don't want questions in the class. Because you don't have knowledge. The moment this happens, you feel challenged. You feel challenged because uh, you don't have the answer. Or you feel that if discussion takes place, it will lead to certain questions or certain issues. Uh, which I cannot handle. So knowledge is the prime requirement. And as uh, I have already told you, the real purpose you must know. It is character building. It is foundation. Then as I said, foundation plus you should should have domain expertise. If somebody is teaching, now there is a saying uh, in English that uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, beggars are basically not choosers. Right? So when uh, you want to choose something, here, what I mean by choosing is that as an academic leader, you want choice. And choice means you have options. And options here, when I mean by option is, is okay, uh, let me put it differently. Say so when you go to a class and you tell them that uh, values are very important. We should uh, look at our culture. We should respect our uh, elders. Right? And uh, we should uh, pay obeisance to God and other things like this. Then what is the one thing which comes in their mind? Ye to koi pandit ji aage. Right? He is something very orthodox, jinko dunya se koi matlab nahi, apni baate bata rahe. Okay? If you have to speak these things, and you want that the student of today, the student of today, who is master of different discipline, maybe engineering, Maybe a person expert of computers. Maybe a person expert of management. Maybe a person expert or studying artificial intelligence or machine learning or something else. If you want these students who are pursuing careers in these different fields or maybe medicine or others, they should listen to you. 
then you should also have knowledge and more knowledge and more expertise in these fields in comparison to your student if i can teach my students business analytics i can teach them strategy i can teach them uh, machine learning right and i know more than them i have the domain expertise and then i tell them that values are important society is crumbling character is very important then they listen to me and they listen to me with the intent that uh, whatever i am saying it is something for following it is not something to be heard from one ear and uh, it should go out from the other one that is not the approach because they know that you have domain expertise you know more than them in their field and then you are telling them something else so they feel that if you are saying it must be correct so i want it's my request to all of you that you must develop domain expertise either in your engineering field or your management field or com what will from whichever field you are a student will listen to you if you are master of your field if you are not master what do you call it maestro if you are not that maestro then nobody is going to listen to you right you become effective only when you are expert so if you are thinking of academic leaders if you are thinking of removing or if you want a better future tomorrow then this effort you have to put at least this effort you must develop knowledge and expertise in particular domain and then you should show the bigger picture to the student then as a uh, academic leader it is very important say okay why say uh, if you if you have some knowledge since uh, we are from india so if you have not you must be knowing you look at uh, you uh, we look at our past or we look at what has happened in the past or if we look at our the mahabharat or if you look at our ramayana or if we look at any other culture you look at the gurus say so you you talk uh, you talk about dronachar so who was dronachar dronachar was knowing about uh, uh ved dronachar was knowing about uh, upanishad dronachar Char was knowing about Sakar Brahm. He was knowing about Nirakar, Sagun, Nirgun. He was knowing all this, and he was teaching all this. Side by side, he was the best archer, and he promised Arjun that I will make you the biggest archer in the world. गदा चलाने में भी ही वॉज एक्सपर्ट भीम वॉज देयर भाला चलाने में ही वॉज एक्सपर्ट कोई और पांडव था जिसको बनाया तो वट आई एम सेंग इज इफ यू लुक एट अवर ओल्ड कल्चर और ट्रेडिशन यू विल फाइंड इन द गुरुकुल सिस्टम देर वॉज अ गुरु हु वॉज मास्टर ऑफ डिफरेंट आर्ट्स सारी आर्ट्स उसको पता होते थे राइट right? and then he was also master of our knowledge and sadhana and how to achieve the ultimate that's why the student or the shish used to follow him we talk about guru dronachar you talk about vasist you talk about anybody so you pick any one in our tradition you will find the same thing and additionally is uh, you talk about great leaders and uh, if you look at the western world or you look at our uh, world you will find great teachers have been able to produce great disciples and great leaders uh, say you have ramkrishna paramahansa and you have vivekananda and you have that uh, 
Dronachar, you have Arjun, you talk about um, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, Plato, you have Socrates, you have Aristotle, uh, you have Alexander. So it is always there. If there is a great uh, teacher or a great academic leader, then you have great disciples and great leaders. So first thing is development of the teacher academic leader that comes with knowledge that comes with domain expertise that comes with uh, a strong character that comes with uh, a firm belief in interdependence which, which comes with a uh, feeling that, that the real purpose not simply making money again say one point and then i move on to the next thing say if you look at uh, the story again go to this mahabharat or you look at uh, uh, Krishna Sudama, uh, uh, you will always find that uh, whatever the period or whosoever was the king, that guru was uh, always uh, running short of money. So if you read Mahabharata, you will come to know that uh, Dronachar, he was not having milk for his uh, only son Ashwasthama. And just when he used to cry, Ashwasthama, because of hunger and Seeing the princess drinking milk, uh, Dronachar's wife, she used to mix water in that uh, floor. And when it becomes white fluid, she used to give to the son. And son, Ashwasthama, believing that he was going to be a very poor. So, what was the reason? Uh, can't he, uh, can't Dronachar get money from the princes or the king? The reason is uh, money was not important. Money was never an issue. Money was never a thing to be achieved or craved for. Now, the, our approaches are entirely different. That's why I'm saying that paradigm shift is required. So until or unless as a teacher and academic leader, we have the right lens or right paradigm, we cannot fix the problem. If you need to fix, you should be able to have a clear mind. You should have a, a clear vision what actually you should, is required as an acad academic leader from you. And when you have that clear vision, then only you can implement it. And for implementation, you must have a firm belief. You must have a firm belief in it. Say, uh, uh, one thing if you have seen in our Gurukul, earlier system of Gurukul, what was happening? It was a place where uh, uh, Shishi will come from uh, different uh, strata of the society. That is, in a Gurukul, you will be having the prince, you will be having uh, uh, the children of very ordinary men, maybe a trader, maybe a soldier, maybe a farmer, maybe. And uh, when they are in the Gurukul, all are same. Everybody is required uh, to do all the work. That is, if, even if you are the prince, if it is uh, the king, Clearing of uh, cleaning of flow, then uh, turn by turn uh, you have to do it. Whether it is prince or whether it is a child of a farmer or whosoever it is, that is all the duties are to be performed by everyone. One thing. Second, uh, that guru is having a big guru pool. They are it is having a number of students, and uh, these students will stay in the guru pool, and uh, the guru will not be charging anything. There was no system of taking fees from the students. So you will, uh, the student will go to the Gurukul, he will study there, and that will be a free, without fee, sort of study. And to run the Gurukul, that uh, Guru will not be taking any uh, donations. Now we have this donation system, or we have money from the government, or money from uh, some uh, rich people putting money as donation. And then you are running that Gurukul. It was not there. 
see the system was that uh, the shishya will go for bhiksha and uh, they will go in the village collecting bhiksha from different houses and whatever they collect they will come back to the gurukul it will be put together then food will be prepared and uh, everybody will have it from the guru to the shish everybody will have the same food and this thing was uh, this thing will repeat day after day now if you uh, look at it what is happening is when as a student for my studies i am getting everything from the guru or the guru kul for my food i am not getting anything from my house or my parents whatever i am getting i am getting it from the society in the form of bhiksha so what happens is once my guru kul term is over once i complete my study and i step out from the guru kul as a student i am totally indebted to my towards my guru and towards the society because whatever is running in my body that is the un of the society which i collected in the form of bhiksha or whatever i got from my guru so my approach is to give back to give back to the society and to the guru kul if i get anything any instruction from the side of guru at any period of my life that was the thing which i will try to uh, say if certain thing is being conveyed something is wanted from my side that is something which i will try to do and on the basis of topmost priority second is i will like to give back to the society i will like to serve the society what they say is shikshaat aate the aur sevaar se jaate the uh so that was one thing which i wanted to share uh, tell you and now uh, the again the center of this is this whole approach is today when we talk about uh, teaching normally if i reflect upon myself or if you reflect upon yourself your approach is that we have prepared the lecture and we are paying this much of money so this is uh, the only time uh, only this much of time we can uh, devote towards our students or towards our institute so we prepare a lecture and we uh, power uh, sometimes we use the ppt and then uh, we if we go a step forward we give them something of a sort of a page and we say it is a case study and then they read it after half an hour we come and we say okay case study you have gone through now we will discuss and then we look at the watch now it's uh, the class is over and we leave this approach if we are having we have to change it as an academic leader and when we want changes when we feel things are not right when we have to think uh, we have to set the things right we must have a student centric approach we must realize that we are here for students if that student has come that he has come with expectation he will become expert in a particular domain and his family feels his parents feel that apart from that subject knowledge his character will be developed our approach should be student centric and when we say student centric it doesn't mean student centric means that you have one approach one size fits for all something like that you have you have you must you should have a different approach for different students you change the approach there shouldn't be a standardized approach nowadays we talk about or many of us are practicing thing also it is flipped the classroom right again the idea is that uh, flipped classroom the idea is we want discussion we want discussion we don't want to catch uh, that a student off guard that is uh, we start the lecture and we say okay this is the topic which we are going to discuss today and uh, the student is totally unprepared so whatever knowledge or whatever you have read in the chapter you read it out 
through slides or uh, whatever you have framed, you speak out. And since it is totally new for the students, you are not able to raise any question. No discussion takes place or minimal dis discussion takes place. Obviously, the result is real learning is not taking place. So, if you want to go for any discussion, provide to the students in advance whatever needs discussion. Provide the teaching material, provide the case studies, provide all, all sort of help to the student in advance. Maybe a day, 24 hours before the class, 48 hours or three days, whatever it is. And then say, okay, on this day at this time we will discuss it. So everybody comes prepared. A student comes prepared, and you are you also go prepared. You cannot go unprepared in the class because in a class of 60, maybe 10 or 12 or 15 must have gone through it. By putting question, they can place you in awkward position if you are not prepared. So that helps the student and helps the teachers also. Because when we talk about student-centric approach, the idea is that we believe that whatever we have, transfer of that should take place from a teacher to the student. And also, it should come back to us in the form of feedback from the side of a student. So that working on the feedback, we can improve or we can remove weaknesses and next time, whenever we have a discussion, whenever we have next class, whenever we have new students, obviously the result should be, or the result is better. Now, if all, all this is happening, then we are able to achieve this in students. We are able to change the maps. As I told you that he believes you. And you say that values are very important, character is very important, side by side your artificial intelligence is very important, then uh, he follows you, right? Character development. And when you have a strong character, then whatever personality development we are talking place, that happens naturally. If you don't have a character, then what happens is now you try to fail. You try to pretend. You try to develop certain uh, traits or something which you feel or you say a pleasing personality. That is you try, basically you are trying to wear a mask. And many a time that mask gets uh, removed from your face because that is not ingrained in your character. So that can never lead to long-term results. So as an academic leader, it is very important for you to ensure that this character development or building takes place. Once it is this, uh, this groundwork has taken place, then that personality flows out naturally. Uh, okay, Dr. Suryash. Uh, at what time I have to finish this? Hello? Sir, as per your convenience, sir. The thing is, uh, the only issue with me is that at 8.40, I have to wind up. I keep uh, observe silence. I keep more. Uh, sir, Dr. you Madan told is about going to uh, 8.40? So we have 10 minutes. PM? If you have to put certain questions, you can ask me because after 8.40, I won't be available. Yes, sir. Or you want, then I we can have some whatever you sir, then. You can finish your session. Then we can have five minute interaction, sir. I okay, okay. So, so this is the other part. As I said, the we have uh, when we talk about academic leaders. Uh, academic leadership means leadership of a teacher. Guru is always a leader. Guru is the ultimate leader, right? And then since today we are running institutes, we are having big institutes. So whosoever is heading those uh, that particular institute, that person is also an academic leader. 
because the character which the institute develops it is very much because of the person who is heading it now before i I discuss all this because all these terms or words are self-explanatory. Uh, I will just like to share with you people. Say, I don't know. Maybe it was uh, five, six days back. Uh, there was uh, I was reading in Business Standard uh, a news uh, regarding Baiju's Baiju Ravindran, and on the second page or the third page, it was a. Uh, uh, four column or five column interview of uh, by Yuravindra. Uh, so that interview basically it was uh, hovering around uh, uh, certain performance, uh, right? Certain issues, why they have declared the results late and what are the issues which the company is facing. Now, uh, there are many things which he talked about, but uh, the point which I want to highlight about the interview is that big company basically it was founded by a teacher, right? And uh, he says that when he started the company, it was the teaching part or guru part they were concerned with. That is how this knowledge, best knowledge, how it should be communicated in the best possible manner. It, it should reach the maximum possible number of people. So they were working on this quality. Or if you talk about this today, that uh, physics wala. Again, if you look at the videos, basically it is the quality. And if you talk about Baiju's or you talk about physics, wala, that second phase is basically that technological innovation and expansion. Then Ravindran says in the interview that now they are focused more about this uh, technological aspect. They are more concerned about managing it, ensuring it reaches maximum number of people. But this uh, company Baiju's Basically, it grew or it became so big, reason being it was founded by a teacher. Most of these educational, if you look at these companies, initially they have been founded by teachers with passion for teaching, quality teaching, quality teaching approach, how best to communicate to the students benefit of students what is the best possible manner what is the best uh, possible way of giving an example of uh, conveying through an example they worked on it and the outcome was a big company so when i talk about a institute head institute head should be knowledgeable institute head should be whosoever is heading the institute. Administrative skills are required, but in academic institute, this should be the first thing. He should be a very knowledgeable person. Uh, you uh, talk about IITs, you talk about IMs, then uh, if you look at the directors basically, I'm not saying uh, don't, I'm not uh, specifying a particular one, but most of the directors, if you are director of IAM, if you are director of IIT or some central big institute, you could be director only if you are knowledgeable. And one of the presumption is that if you are director, you know much, much more, or maybe you are knowing more than the teachers there or professors there. And you compare with, uh, I'm not saying say all, but you compare with the universities or the institute today. The person who is leading or heading, and you look at the knowledge part, you will find that most of the people or many of the people in the institute are more knowledgeable. They more they they know more than the person who is leading them. That creates a problem. 
so if you talk about academic leadership of institutes first thing is that person should be knowledgeable that builds the reputation that builds the brand and that brings a vision because if a person is knowledgeable he has vision if you are not knowledgeable if you are not experienced and then uh, obviously you don't have vision you can't think we talk about nep is nep possible without a vision without knowledge you have knowledge you have vision you know the different facets of personality and how they could be developed and how it will lead to a better society so you try to incorporate then as an uh, academic head or institute head one skill as a leader which is required is delegation and decentralization so what happens is normally when a head is there they try to micromanage the thing there could be n number of reasons sometimes the reason is uh, the difference in pace of the leader and the team that is the person who is heading the institute the speed is different and the people who are working in the institute their speed is different so the boss try to micromanage the thing sometimes lack of faith and sometimes lack of competency in the institute head but as an academic leader as a person heading the institute you get the best results when you have a team when you work with a team when you work through a team when you believe in a team the results are maximum and when you work with a team obviously it requires delegation obviously it requires decentralization obviously it requires sharing and sharing of not just power sharing of not just resources sharing of credit also now when this is not happening then there are problems then there are issues then there are clashes then there are outcomes or results not as per expectation a leader should also be very empathetic this thing is required whether you are a teacher or whether you are heading the institute because until or unless you are not able to put yourself in the shoes of someone else then maybe you won't be able to understand his or her view point i remember what uh, i read it somewhere about ibrahim lincoln uh, he said it and it's a very famous quote i am not remembering because my memory is a problem but again the crux is he said he don't criticize or he said that uh, he said or uh, कि अगर मैं उस व्यक्ति की जगह पे होता अगर मैं उस व्यक्ति की जगह पे होता और उसकी स्थिति में होता तो हो सकता है मैं भी वही करता जो उसने किया तो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दिस प्रोवाइड एस एन इनसाइड अबाउट ग्रेट लीडर they have this empathy they are very empathetic they understand people they understand their issues so as a teacher now we talk about peer learning and peer learning has been recognized as one of the best approaches in learning that is student learns much faster from their peers than from their teachers 
peer learning is promoted throughout the world, the West and uh, the East also. West people, they are particularly focusing about peer learning, one to one or something like this. The reason is this, when we talk about peer learning, the peer understand the friend much better than the teacher. He or she is able to put himself or herself in the shoes of the friend or the colleague. Then he is able to translate or communicate or transfer to the peer what the problem is, how it is to be solved or how it is to be learned and they learn it. So the point is being a leader, academic leader, whether you are heading the institute or you, whether you are heading the department or you are a teacher, you should be very empathetic. Okay, this is all from my side and uh, I want to speak, okay? So it's all and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Madan for providing me this platform, Dr. Bharat Dwaj and uh, dear uh, participants. If I said something which is wrong, just forgive me. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Now I welcome all you. <coughs> now let's have some questions uh, from the participants. If uh, they have an uh, I uh, please, I will be leaving. Okay. 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 So okay, please sure. you discuss among yourself because it's my morning time. Okay. And if you have you any much, issue, sir. you just write it and you give it to this uh, Pragati or uh, Dr. Suresh Bharadwaj. They can mail me and uh, we can discuss tomorrow. That is not an issue with you. Oh. Okay. okay, sir. Okay. okay, thank you. Now, I would like to request Dr. Rodman, sir. Uh, Dr. Rodman, sir, is affiliated with Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Hardwar. And uh, he is having a 14 year of academic experience experience over to you sir thanks a lot sir it's great privilege for me that i have got a chance to be a part of the session professor dr sanjay misra delivering a wonderful session uh, before us in his presentation he emphasized the skills of leaders and tell us how these skills can be developed he started his session with the beautiful word learning is process which cannot be stopped Elevating his topic, academic leadership and personality development, he told whether leading in organization or a teacher always happen have an open mind. He discussed in detail about economic disparity, economic frauds, environmental changes, social unrest, and he suggests the remedy for it that responsible people, developed people, literate people, educated people, but empathize on people with high character. He told, if you think for nation or world, need of people with high character, and these will come from our institution, schools and college and university. In simple way, he tell us difference between leader and manager. He said, manager, so you only the path for moving towards your goal, but a leader, an academic leader, so you all shortest path for your goal. The speakers discuss in detail about paradigms. And also effective academic leader has vision, vision, mission, bigger picture, which can be useful for holistic development for our society. Besides is the story of Kalak Singh was very interesting and the moral of the story is very good. Don't break, don't break anyone trust. Also, he tell us the quality of academic leader like knowledge, lead of example, student centric approach, character, domain, which are foundation for good academia. At last, he said, if we want result from that all, the student should be high in character, personality, character and personality, but also institute had also has vision, mission, knowledge, team building, win-win approach, administrative skills are required for better. 
academia thanks a lot over to you sir uh, thank you dr rodman sir now uh, as we know that the talk was very pragmatic our honorable speaker uh, discussed about uh, the characters that uh, an academic leader should build uh, in the students our approach should be student centric and the lecture was very uh, crucial nowadays uh, because we are amid uh, the national education policy implementation stage we are so this lecture was uh, very informative and uh, very applicable in today's era and i also like to extend my vote of thanks to the coordinators of this program and the session planner session coordinators and session reporters and all the participants that uh, participated in this conference was uh, effectively and they uh, and this lecture is I, I in this session is very informative and this also helped in the accomplishment of the objective for which we are gathering here so i extend my uh, good wishes to the uh, aict and ugc for facilitation for their sport and for their encouragement for academic leader and F FTP uh, program. Thank you very much. Before ending this session, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Pallavi Bhardwaj for the Santi part. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Om Dyo Shanti Antariksha Shanti Prithvi Shanti Rapaha Shanti Rosh Dhyaha Shanti Vanaspate Shanti Vishwe Deva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvam Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Sama Shanti Redhi Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you, Pati. Now I request to participate to kindly leave the meeting and tomorrow we will meet here again at the same time. Thank you participants. Yeah.